Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master. Thank you for joining me today. I look, we're continuing this theme. In fact, we're going to close it out. Today's lesson, today's, this week's theme has been uh, the gift of a problem. And we've discovered how God uses problems and God uses people and God uses patience. That's in God's tool belt. God uses perseverance in order to get us where God wants us to be. We don't see it when we're going through a problem that it's a gift, but when we get through it and get and grow beyond it, we can say, well, you know, what's that problem that helped us to grow? When you lift weights and you push against something, you it's resistance. And guess what happens as a result of the resistance? You grow as a result of the resistance. You grow. So God will put something heavy in your life sometimes and say, push against it. And it helps you grow to get you ready for the next level that God is going to take you. Last week, we talked about the, uh, excuse me, yesterday, we talked about the uh, the church that was having this ethnic strife, ethnic schism as the Hebrew women and the Greek speaking women uh, were fighting because the Greek speaking women, women were being, widows were being neglected in the disbursement of basic needs, food. And it was this that resulted in the calling of the deacons who assisted the pastors or the apostles so that the apostles could focus on the word and the deacons could focus on the widows. The first deacon that is mentioned is a man named Stephen. Stephen. He is a man of, of in fact, I'm the pastor of St. Stephen Church. And uh, Stephen was an incredible, incredible man. And I want you to see, first of all, something about the faith of Stephen. The faith of Stephen. Verse 5 says this. Verse 5, uh, Acts chapter 6, verse 5 says, The proposal pleased the whole group. They chose Stephen, a man full of faith. Now, that's an important word. If, if, you've got a, if you've got full of faith, that means there's no room for non-faith. One of the reasons our life gets off track is because it's not a full, we're not full of what we're supposed to be about. When your life is full, when your time and your schedule is full, that means there's no place, no room for foolishness. And Stephen was a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit. Look at verse 8. It says this about Stephen's faith. Now Stephen, a man full of God's grace and power, performed great wonders and signs among the people. And when you have the faith of God, the grace of God allows you to do very powerful things that cause people to wonder. Signs and wonders. Great faith. He's a man of great faith. Please know that people who have great faith also have great foes. You cannot have great faith without someone not liking you. He has foes. You will have foes when you have faith. In verse 9, we are told this. Verse 9, we are told opposition arose, however, from members of the synagogues of the freedmen, as it was called. In other words, it wasn't really a, that's what they called themselves. Uh, as it was called, Jews of Cyrene and Alexandria, as well as the province of Cilicia and Asia, who began to argue with Stephen. So Stephen has faith, but Stephen has foes. You show me someone who was great, and I'll show you someone who had opposition. You cannot have a position without an opposition. You cannot have uh, faith without foes. Show me a Moses. He's got faith. I'll show you a Pharaoh. He's who's, who's his foe. Show me a David. He's got faith. Show me, and I'll show you a Goliath. He's his foe. Show me an Elijah who has faith. I'll show you a Jezebel who is Elijah's foe. Show me an Abraham Lincoln, and I'll show you a Lee and a Davis. Show me a Martin Luther King Jr. and I'll show you a J. Edgar Hoover because it's impossible to have faith without having foes. So you got faith, expect some foes, but those who push against you, resistance, lifting weights, help you to grow, bring out the best in you.
So you see the faith of Stephen, man, full of faith, doing wonders and miracles. He was selected as the first of the deacons. You see he has foes, and so you will have foes. But notice in spite of his foes, the force of Stephen's. In spite of his foes, Stephen, Stephen had force. In other words, his foes were not able to overcome him. His foes were not able to overcome him. Look in Acts chapter 7, verse 54, it says this. When the number of the Sanhedrin heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man, park here, standing at the right hand of God. Usually when we read about Jesus as after he ascended into heaven, he's sitting at the right hand of God. But Stephen, who's giving a defense of the gospel, is so outstanding that Jesus gets up from his seat and stands and applause and says, I see heaven open up and the Son of Man standing. He's not sitting. He's standing because of Stephen's speech. Verse 57 says, as they cover their ears and yelling at the top of their voice, they all rushed at him. They closed their ears because they did not want to hear the truth of Stephen's message. They dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. He was a martyr. He was stoned, but notice the force of his faith. Meanwhile, the witness laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. And guess who this young man named Saul will become? The young man named Saul will become Paul. And it was the witness of Stephen that convicted Saul. And it's through Saul that God's going to raise Saul up. There would not be a Saul if it had not been for the witness and stoning of Stephen. And then finally, look at the favor of Stephen. Verse 58 says this, chapter 7, verse 58 says, they dragged him out of the city, began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid the coat at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Who said that? Jesus he's acting like Jesus because that's what Jesus said. Father, into my hands, I commend my spirit. Jesus said that on the cross while he was dying. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Who said that? Jesus said that on the cross. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. When he had said this, he fell asleep. He's with the Lord. Saul approved of their killing him. He approved it. On that great, on that day, a great persecution broke out against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered. Stop here, throughout Judea and Samaria. Which is to say that Stephen gets stoned, Paul gets Saul gets is going to get converted as a result of this terrible experience. The church leaves Jerusalem as Christ intended for them to do go as a result of the persecution, and they get scattered throughout the world. Isn't that something? Stone, while Stephen's getting stoned rocks with rocks of rage, he's getting stoned with the rocks of rage. He looks up and sees Jesus standing beside the right hand of the Father, applauding him. So there's two rocks in this story, the rocks of rage that the people are storing and the rock of ages who is standing up for Saul. And when you're doing God's will, don't worry about the rocks of stone. Know that the rock of ages is still working things out for God's purpose. Even in the midst of this terrible problem, the outcome was outstanding because the church finally gets scattered as a result of something terrible and something bad. And I want you to know, my brothers and sisters, sometimes something terrible, something bad, a problem is used by God to get us where God wants us to be. Listen, for a year and a half now, I've been doing these powerful points to ponder. These powerful points to ponder. I would never be doing these powerful points to ponder if it had not been for COVID-19. Some problem helped bring out something in me that was already always there. And that is learning a new technology, learning how to communicate, learning how to communicate online, doing daily a different devotional that is, it's helped me grow in my faith walk, reminding me of some things that I already knew, but just reinforcing it. And it was something bad that brought that to pass. 
In my city, Breonna Taylor was brutally killed by some terrible police officers. Killed, shot in her own home. George Floyd, there was a knee on his neck. It was public lynchings. Armand Arbery in Georgia, a lynching. But out of that bad experience came a racial reckoning that we've never seen before globally throughout this world. God took a problem and it became a gift to help it move us forward to, to raise awareness on the reality that we are not a post-racial country. God can use the problems in our lives to get us where God wants us to be. And you've got to believe that God is in control. God knows what he's doing. And you just have to trust God in the process. God will keep you in the midst of the problem. God will get you through the problem. God will get you beyond the problem so that when you look back over it, you will say it was the problem that helped me to grow. And I didn't call it a gift. I call it everything but a gift. I used a few choice words to describe what I was going through. I almost abandoned my faith. I was not the same person, but now I look back over it and I can say the thing I was complaining about was in fact a gift. That disappointment was an appointment. That defeat was for my development. That adversity was for my advancement. Paul put it this way in Romans 8, 28. For we know that all things work together for good. They didn't say all things are good, but all things work together for good for them that love the Lord. Amen. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for this week and what we've learned from the book of Acts about how you used the problem to get your people where you wanted them to be. So whatever tool you have to use to get us where we need to be, help us to submit and surrender and trust you during the process. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to thank you for being with me this entire week for the powerful points to ponder. Look, if you don't have a church home, I'd like to extend an invitation to you to become a part of St. Stephen Baptist Church. You can be a digital disciple. Contact us here, uh, newstart at ssclive.org. We get, will get back with you. Don't forget that uh, I just released a new book. You can go to my website to purchase all of my books, uh, www.drkevinwcosby.com. Uh, Check it out. I think you'll be blessed if you get a copy of any of the books that I, God has blessed me to write. Also, don't forget tomorrow's the Lord's Day. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. So you join us for worship tomorrow. Um, the actual worship, pre-worship experience begins at uh, nine o'clock and then worship begins at 9 30. i hope you will be with us in worship especially tomorrow you know why because tomorrow is the sunday that we end our absence from the actual building the doors open up and we will all return to the campus tomorrow in a sense we end the COVID-19 protocol of being distant from the actual church building. And so tomorrow is going to be a grand time in the Lord, and you don't want to miss it. So you be with us as we return and St. Stephen's returns back to full whosoever will let him come, public worship. See you then, okay? God bless you. I appreciate you. And uh, don't forget, uh, that we're in COVID-19, but our response is what? Remember to stay safe and to stay sane and never forget God is in control. Love you much. I'll see you tomorrow.